then use it and abuse it for his, you know, according to his whims and fancies, they would install a backdoor, and your machine would become part of a larger copy of infected computers. Other payloads that get installed after the antivirus software and root gets to conceal the attacker's presence. In terms of symptoms, most users once they infected unless the the payload that's installed, you know, puts some graphical pop-up, they would have no clue that they're infected, their machine is participating in an internet attack. And in India especially, what happens is if your machine is part of a botnet or sending spam, what happens? Your bandwidth you know, keeps getting utilized. And most Indians are, most Indian ISPs offer a limited bandwidth plan. And if you were to exceed, you know, your, your, your bandwidth for that particular month, you end up paying a big bill. If you had a spam block in your machine, it could send a million mails in an hour. And imagine if you were infected for one whole week you would get a monster bill. And I have a very hard time explaining to the ISP as to why you would, you know, rate up such internet usage. Configure. This had made the news for all the wrong reasons. And it's finally come to India. Anybody from IAM here? No? Okay. Prometric. Yeah, I don't want to get beaten up. The config is not something which just happened today. Uh, it's a year old. There is, you know, a, a quarter of a million dollar reward for the authors of config. But still no news about them. Uh, why it made the news in India was, unfortunately, you know, Prometric says that config and Hinda, two old viruses, could be, you know, responsible for the the failed cat test. Uh, the media used the word config. Okay. Just to clarify, it's not Conflika, it's Conflika, there is no L in it. And India is not the only nation which, you know, uh, bore the brunt of Conflika. You've had Conflika infect multiple hospitals in the US and around the world, causing, you know, danger to human life itself. You've had Conflika infect the US, the UK parliament. You have it infect, you know, the, uh, the French and UK air forces. So with German defense computers, and Konfika also went to space, you know, uh, and infected the IA space station, all thanks to a, a USB drive that traveled into space. So given that viruses can pretty much travel across the world, not just, you know, uh, advanced countries, uh, pretty much everybody is susceptible to a virus. This is the Konfika infection map. You can see that India is still pretty heavily infected. And those dots translate into a million infected nodes in India. So suggest India alone. So think and see, if you were a bot master with a million computers at your disposal, the possibilities are endless. You could use it to bring up websites and hold them to ransom. Or a simple example it could be hold the stock exchange to ransom. If the stock exchange cannot function for even one day, that causes millions of dollars of losses. And given that India has a sizable botnet population, this episode should ring a bell. Uh, what does Twitter, Facebook, Live Journal, YouTube have to do with India? The word DDoS, denial of service. Uh, there was a pro Georgian blogger who used to blog on these sites and somebody did not like it. So they used a massive bucket of computers to cause a denial of service attack on, on that person's page in these portals. And a side effect of it was all the portals and social networking sites slowed down. Why do I bring it? Because India's contribution to this botnet was 80%. Again, this year, the first time India is figuring, you know, in the news for all the wrong reasons, cyber security wise. Again, please forgive the projector. And given that we have a sizable botnet population, you can see that our spam contribution is steadily increasing. In Q1, it was around 4%, Q2, it's around 7%, and you can only expect it to grow in the coming quarters. And if you 
you have a sizable, you know, if you have a lot of spam community network, phishing can be far behind. Um, we have seen multiple Indian banks, you know, customers being targeted by fishers. Phishing um, took off in India after e-commerce e and internet banking became popular. You have do-it-yourself kits uh, available on the internet. With a do-it-yourself kit, you do not need to know, you know any programming or coding. You just click, configure, and then post your phishing kit. For a fisher, for him to send a million mails is going to cost ne next to nothing. He could send a million mails in one hour's time. And of those million mails, even if 0.01 people respond of all victims, that is still a thousand victims. And if he could get a thousand victims in a day, he, he, I mean, it's, it's a very, very profitable business. And we also saw and a rise in phishing emails around the verified by Visa and the MasterCard Secure Entity. So while banks are trying to make online credit card statements you know, more secure by implementing verified by Visa, fishers were too busy you know, sending out emails, posing as banks, asking for customer details. On the Indian forums, malware source code is freely available. You can just Google if you go to Rapid Share, if you go to all the forums, and source code for different types of virus families are easily available. A side effect of this is people are taking source code viruses and customizing it according to local and regional themes. For example, here we see Autorun malware, which is very popular because it's cheap availability of USB sticks. You know, modified to use Indian scandals as bait. Here we have, you know, it would go to an instant messenger or email, say, if you want to see the latest scandal of an Infosys girl, click on this link. You're also seeing the usual, you know, actresses and actors being targeted. <coughs> now, whatever we've seen here is on a, uh, on a mass scale. We've seen websites being attacked on a mass scale. We've seen search engine results being poisoned. We've seen malware being written on a mass scale pertaining to India. The next category of attacks is more targeted. It's called the targeted attack. This is aimed at a very specific subset of users. It could just be one particular organization, for example, a financial institution or a you know, pharmaceutical company. And even in that company, they would target only the C-level executives, not just every town they can handle. And what happens is, they would usually send an email as if it appeared from a trusted source. For example, I, as an attacker, could spoof club hack and send a mail as if it came from Brobit to all the speakers saying, this is the agenda, change in agenda. Okay, and it would come as a PDF file. So a lot of people do not trust Microsoft Office documents because of the past infamous history associated with it. But P and PDF is considered the de facto standard. So if a PDF that document which is specially crafted came, nine out of ten times people would open it. If I was doing a penetration testing or if I was trying to attack an organization, I could create a specialized PDF document. And say for example, if you wanted to target an organization, you know, who would be the weakest link in an IT organization? Think of a set of users to whom if you sent a document, they would open it. In more specific. HR, perfect. You're thinking like an attack. HR will open any document that says resume, word, or PDF. And they are computer literate, but not exactly security sent. And, I, and I'm going to show you in another demonstration how a specially crafted PDF file could be made to look so genuine, but yet do something secretly in the background. In this particular example, there is an email pertaining to me from the military wing of the Embassy of India going to a wing commander. Is, is it visible? I'm sorry if it's not visible. Um, saying, you know, please find you know, the latest details of the aircraft of the Pakistani Air Force. Now, to somebody who opened it, you would see a PowerPoint with different aircraft pictures. You would go through it, close it, and then continue with your day. But in the background, what has happened is a backup would be installed, which would affect your machine and connect back to the app to the adapter, and you would remote access to your box. Yeah, 
Oh, this is not a binder. This uses a vulnerability in Microsoft PowerPoint to you know, do something other than what it's supposed to do when you open the document. How many people, you know, all of us patch windows, okay, because even if you don't want to do it, if you have a genuine copy, it connects to Windows Update, downloads it, and forces you to restart. How many of us patch uh, Adobe Acrobat? What is the latest version of Adobe Acrobat? 9.2. 9.2, excellent. How many of us patch our Winsit, our real player, VNC, Winamp, QuickTime? I work on the same domain. Just one person is doing. But for us, I mean, it doesn't even strike us that, you know, hey, uh, these applications could be used to, you know, uh, exploit the machine. You're just as vulnerable running a, you know, vulnerable version of Adobe. It's the same as, you know, running a vulnerable version of IE and Windows, Microsoft Windows. Sorry, but not to be said, in some year back, uh, McAfee virus update patch on my crafted in and uh, produces uh, McAfee server DOS attack. I'm talking about July 2006. Okay. So similar, the same plug and play architecture was used in that attack and many uh, enterprises were, you know, they lost some of their business because of DOS. Mm -hmm. So it, it's typically like uh, OLA technology that is introduced in Windows which is eventually, you know, safe to give theft from Apple but many a times this is the cause root that happens. So what you're talking about is a false positive from the vendor or? No, it, it's a misuse of the technology. Okay. Uh, Same. Right. Uh, half scan, you know, uh, half TCP <coughs> handshake leaves the channels open which is not there yet in the operating system stack to monitor and gives hacker a clean channel to plug in their whatever he wishes or she wishes to. Similar, these all sort of, you know, Office, Internet Explorer are typical the unexpected, pro, you know, uh, unexpected result of the OLE technology or the infrastructure that Microsoft introduced. And unfortunately, they are um, not aware, I should not say not aware, but we are not much keen about, you know, fencing it well. Okay. Um, this is another example where, you know, a PDF document was used. Um, we see a lot of attacks on uh, government agencies, around, you know, NGOs, especially those who deal with different issues. Uh, this was an example where the, you know, uh, a Tibetan monk was about to go to Delhi. It was in the news. Uh, and this document was sent to a select group of people who were involved with this particular visit. And I'm going to show you a demonstration here where um, I would open a PDF document. It would look very genuine. And then I would run some monitoring tools in the background to show you what the PDF document is really doing. Other than you, how many people have looked at an exploit in action? Okay. Alright, so uh, here's an example where the document name is how instructions how to get there. Yeah, it, it looks very legitimate. It says uh, the Tibetan peace garden, you know, take the train, you know, follow these instructions, and you will get there. To a normal user, this would leave, this would seem perfectly legitimate. And now I am going to run a tool called Fidemo, something which researchers use to to check for this activity. I'm sorry. Yeah, which is now a Microsoft. So I, I'm just going to log for uh, rights alone, otherwise it, it would cause a lot of noise. So I have file mode running here. So every time an application uh, reads a write to, writes to this, file mode is going to log it and display. I am opening this document. It opens, displays it, and then it closes. Now let's go back to file mode. And if you see here, Acro RD32 is the executable associated with Adobe PDF. You will see that the moment it was opened, it wrote a file called A.exe to the C drive. 